But first, with harvest right around the corner, it's always a great opportunity for a quick farm safety update. Every year, grain bins and power lines pose a serious risk to producers, their equipment, and the people around them. Coming up first today, let's go back to last harvest season. Market Journal producer Bill Dodd gives us a closer look at grain bin safety and also shares why the Nebraska Public Power District will enc encourage farmers to look up and look out. Few things can be more catastrophic to a farming operation than an accident that leads to permanent injury or death. According to the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, agriculture ranks among the most hazardous industries. Farmers are at very high risk for fatal and non-fatal injuries, and every day about 100 agricultural workers suffers a lost time work injury. According to research from Purdue University, in 2019 there were 38 documented cases of grain entrapment across the country. That is a nearly 27% increase of the 30 reported instances in 2018. Normally they go in, they leave the unload system running, they stand in the middle of the bin because a chunk of out of condition grain has blocked the, the grain from flowing. They stand right in the middle of that bin with a rod and they, they, they jab down through the grain to bust up that chunk. And when, they, when the, it works and when they hit that chunk of grain, it gra I mean the grain literally grabs them and starts pulling them right down with it. Harvest can be an especially high paced and frantic time for many producers. That's why many experts are now urging those same producers to take a second look and really pay attention to their surroundings as they perform seemingly everyday tasks such as checking grain bins. One way to ensure your safety when checking grain bins and avoid grain entrapment is simply grain management and quality control. Uh, to flat out avoid it, I mean grain management is key. Make sure you keep that grain in good condition so you don't have the chunks. Ext uh, university extension agencies do trainings and offer a lot of material on, the, on this subject to make sure that grain is kept in condition. We always, we always use the old adage that, you know, if I've got a grain bin full of grain, that may be $100,000, $200,000 worth of grain in there, maybe, more, maybe a half million dollars worth of grain in that bin. If I took that half million dollars or quarter million dollars and I put it in a bag in cash and hung it in that bin, they'd go out and check it every day to make sure it was still there but they fill that bin with that much money value of grain, they may not check it, but once a week, sometimes once every two weeks, we've had guys we've talked to that, oh, I didn't check it for a month. So, you know, it, there's a variation there and they don't, they're not connecting the two with the value of, and how often they need to be inspecting it and checking it. So the more often they check it and make sure the ma management and the maintenance, and nowadays there's a lot more um, automated controllers out there that can help protect your investment in that grain that's in that bin. So the quality of the grain is, is key. Another step you can take to bolster the safety of grain system workers is to install a lifeline in the roof of a grain bin to ensure entrapment doesn't become full-blown engulfment. When we're dealing with, with grain like that out of condition, is there's lifelines now and they're very economical to put in grain bins on a farm. Um, these lifeline systems prevent a person from ever sinking more than waist deep in the grain. So the idea is simply we mount a couple of uh, an anchor point and a, a pulley up at the top of the roof and the farmer can rig the life, he installs his lifeline, takes about 10 seconds to run the rope up through and back um, and then hook it on himself or whoever's going in the bin. And then we prefer to have a second person there to run the rope for him and while he's in there working, that way they can get help if something happens. We can rig the lifeline so that the farmer controls it himself. But again, I, I always, encourage and make sure you've got a radio or a cell phone or something that when you're in that bin you can call for help because once something do, if something does happen even though you're only waist deep you're still stuck and trapped and you're going to need help getting out so um, if they're going to be working alone we can facilitate that to keep them safe but they just need to make sure they've got communication uh, available to get help coming. When checking bins it's also encouraged to use a lockout tagout system each and every time before entering bins or performing service or maintenance. Grain system workers should always assess what controls need to be locked out before any work is done. Um, the other thing is, is simply before you go into a bin, lock out, tag out. If they would lock out that auger before they go in, yeah, you may have to make two or three trips in and out until you get it flowing again, but that means you're going home at night. You're not, you're not going to die in that bin that day if you lock out that auger. Or just, you know, even for a farmer, if they don't lock it out, if they're the only one there, shut it off before you go in. I mean. That's, that's better than nothing. If you leave it running, you know you've got a chance of not coming out. On the subject of lockout tagout, electricity is a very large component to farming these days. This everyday facet of life is so commonplace that it may sometimes be taken for granted and can sometimes be overlooked as a costly or fatal hazard. 
However, a recent uptick in cases involving contact with farm equipment and electrical wires has caused the Nebraska Power Public District to take notice of this issue and has been encouraging ag producers to look up and look out. If you do encounter a scenario where your equipment makes contact with a live high-voltage wire, NPPD recommends that if you have a cell phone, you should remain in the cab and call 911 immediately. If it is absolutely necessary to exit the vehicle due to other hazards such as a fire, you'll want to jump completely away from the vehicle, ensuring that you never touch the ground in the vehicle at the same time, landing with your feet together. From there, you'll need to shuffle your feet, or hop with both feet together, 20 to 40 feet from the area. Once you've cleared the area, you should never try to return to the vehicle until the situation has been resolved by the local power authorities. Keeping these topics in mind over the course of the fall season will help you have a safe and successful harvest. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd.